Our top story tonight, a Jones County mom worried after her son was apparently injured in a school bus accident. Serena Burst joins us in studio with more details about what happened. The student's mother is still looking for answers. She was expecting her boy to come home safe and sound. Jennifer Davis says Monday she was expecting her son to get off the bus at his normal drop off spot. She says when she got a call from the director of transportation for Jones County Schools to be at the bus stop, she began to worry. An incident report from the Jones County Sheriff's Office says the student was hospitalized from injuries on school bus 24. It says the bus tire blew out and veered into a ditch on a dirt road in East Jones County later in the afternoon. The incident report says that when the boy got off the bus, he had a paper towel to his chin that was soaked in blood. Jennifer Davis says her best friend immediately took her son to get some medical help. Sergeant Marty Brownlee with the Jones County Sheriff's Office wrote that the boy was sleeping on the bus and fell on the floor during the accident. Sergeant Brownlee said he was dispatched here at Coliseum Hospital where he learned about the boy's injuries. Davis sent us these pictures of her son. She says it's concerning that neither the driver or director of transportation called an ambulance immediately. She says they shouldn't have let her son fall back asleep after the accident. The report says the boy had cuts to the chin, abrasions to the left leg, and a concussion. I spoke to Wendy Vaughn, the director of transportation. She declined to comment. Sergeant Brownlee says he got other calls about students who were injured. He says the situation is still being investigated. Frank. All right, Sabrina, thanks very much. Now, this story has many of you sounding off on our Facebook page. Angela says this is outrageous and says the child's injuries could have been much worse and that it doesn't matter if he was sleeping. Dolores says she has had issues with buses in her school system as well. Her grandkids had to cross a busy Sparta highway after being dropped off and had to walk the rest of the way home. But Tyrone says the driver probably should have called an ambulance, but it is not their fault. The child was asleep when the tire blew and the bus could be inspected and stuff can still happen. If you want to weigh in, you can post your thoughts on the bus crash as a comment on this story on our Facebook page. We're taking a closer look at school bus crashes in central Georgia. In January of this year, six-year-old Arlana Haynes, a first grader at Parkwood Elementary School in Warner Robins, died after she was ejected from a school bus which ran off the road on Forest Park Drive. The driver, 29-year-old Shalita Jackson Harris, was charged with first-degree vehicular homicide along with reckless driving. When Robbins police said Harris was driving too fast around a curve, which caused the bus to go off the road and turn on its side. A week later, a Houston County bus ran into the back of a car in front of Perry Middle School. No students were injured. In March, a school bus carrying a golf team from Augusta hit a pickup truck towing cinder blocks on Highway 49 near Oak Valley Drive. The team's head coach was hospitalized in that wreck. In August of 2017, six Georgia military college students were hospitalized after their bus ran into a train in North Carolina. And in April of last year, a Bibb County school bus was rear-ended by a driver on Highway 57 near Crystal Lake Drive. The bus was coming from Burned Elementary and had about 20 students on board. The school system said none of them were hurt. Right now, seatbelts aren't required on Georgia school buses. The State Department of Education says it's up to the individual school districts to add seatbelts to buses. Only eight states, Arkansas, California, Florida, Louisiana, Nevada, New Jersey, New York, and Texas require seatbelts. In July, the National Transportation Safety Board said all new school buses should come with three-point seatbelts, as they say that will provide children with the best protection available. 